Welcome to Java EE6 webinar series. Uh, today's topic is JSF 2.0 templates and composite components. And next week, we are going to learn Ajax on JSF. So we cover uh, three different topics on JSF. Uh, by the way, I assume you have reasonably good understanding on what JSF is all about. So. Um, uh, for those of you who are not really familiar with the JSF, uh, today's topic might be a little bit kind of uh, beyond you, but uh, you should be able to still follow. So let's move on to the presentation, templating and composite components. So these are the topics that we are going to cover. First, we are going to spend some time, about 10 minutes, on templating. And the rest of the presentation, we are going to learn composite components. And on the composite components, uh, we are going to start with a simpler composite component and how to use it. And then we are going to look into uh, some advanced topics. So let's start with templating. So what is templating? The concept of templating is um, pretty much every uh, in a modern web application framework. So it's not really nothing new. Uh, it's not unique for a JSF. So it defines common look and feel. Uh, common look and feel includes layout or styling. So all displaying pages share the same, for example, common header and footer and common layout and common styling. So idea of usage of template is that when you need to change your styling or layout, the only place you go and change is this template file rather than each individual display file. By the way, template file is XHTML file, just like a display pages are XHTML files. So in JSF 1.x, uh, the templating options, meaning templating technology that were used uh, in JSF, uh, there are in fact several because in JSF 1.x there was no standard templating technology. So people were using tiles, uh, Oracle ADF regions, and uh, you know, performance templating is like a JSF includes, and facelet. So facelet has been the most popular templating technology, uh, even in JSF 1.x. Now in JSF 2.0, uh, templating uh, from this facelet, uh, by the way, this templating is from facelet. Uh, the uh, is actually standardized, so you don't need to use anything other than facelet. So it provides a standardized templating text, and these templating text accept parameters. So this is a you know the um, uh, pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's look into uh, this templating text uh, from facelet. So. First of all, I want you to understand there are two different pages. Again, template file, and then there is a display page that is using this template file. So UI insert tag is used in template file, and it's basically to define insertion point, where the content fragment from display page will be inserted. Okay, so I'm going to actually show you an example in a few seconds. Why, why don't I actually show that here, and we'll come go back and forth. So this is the template file and UI insert tag is defining the insertion point. So this is actually defining insertion point of the insertion point name is HTML head. And this is another insertion point. Uh, the name of this insertion point is navigation. And here we define another insertion point called the main. So this is the location that display page uh, will actually provide uh, a fragment, HTML fragment. Okay, so UI insert is used in a template file. Let's go back to the previous slide. Now, UI comp composition, this tag is used in display page. So in display page, uh, it has to specify what is the location of the template it wants to use. And that's where it's going to use UI composition tag. So basically, by UI composition, and then you provide the location of the template. Okay, so this template file uh, and uh, this display page is basically saying that I'm using this template file. Okay, uh, and uh, by the way, uh, UI composition, uh, the uh, actually anything outside of UI composition tag will be ignored. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, display page. This is the display page example. So here basically this display page says that I want to use a template XHTML file defined under this location. Okay, 
as UI composition tag in display page. All right, UI define is also used in display page and this is used to define a content fragment that gets inserted into this insertion point of the template file. Okay, so let's take a look at this define in display page. So we go, so remember, this is a template file that defines the insertion point. Uh, insertion point has a name like HTML head and navigation or main. Now, if you go to the display page, uh, it says, I want to use this template file and the code fragment it wants to insert these two lines is actually inserted in the insertion point named as HTML head and navigation and main. Remember this HTML head and navigation and main, those are the insertion point names that are, defi that are defined in template, right? So in this case, these two lines, meta and title elements, those two fragments, uh, those, uh, the, the fragment that contains those two tags will be inserted into this template. Right here, okay? The same thing for navigation, same thing for main. Okay, so that is UI define. UI include is used in both template and display page, and it's just like a JSP include. It includes content from another XHTML file. So if you're using UI include in a template file, and then that content will be actually shared by all display page. Okay. Or if you are using include in display page, that display page will just include the contents specified in UI include XHTML file. So this is an example. Uh, this is a template example. So we are using UI include and we are basically including header XHTML file. And here we are uh, including footer.xhtml file. All right, so we just cover four important tags. So let's actually review the template file again. So this is the template file. Uh, this template file happened to be named as a template.xhtml file and is located, happened to be located. It doesn't have to, it doesn't have to locate on the includes. It just happened to be uh, the directory that contains this template file. So again, this UI insert provides insertion point and then we have uh, included uh, the uh, header and footer. So template file, as I said before, defines a layout. So in this case, uh, it's defining the layout. Uh, for example, this uh, the uh, this uh, uh, you know header is going to be in panel group here, and uh, the uh, the footer is on the bottom or something like that. And it also specifies the common uh, the styling. So the template.css file uh, provides the common styling for all. Uh, display pages. Okay, so this is a template file. So a template file, as you can imagine, uh, is made of, you know, it's just a genuine XHTML file and it contains a default title which could be overridden by display pages. And again, it could use common uh, style sheet and uh, it could also actually could, it could also include a utility JavaScript and uh, that could be accessible in all Java, uh, the display pages and, you know, the, the uh, layout. Uh, and also default content. Okay, so this is an example of display page that is using this template file. Okay, so basically the role of display page is to provide the content fragment that will be inserted into insertion points of this template file. Okay, so it provides three code fragments, right? So it provides this, this, and this, okay? So this is the uh, code fragment that will be inserted into HTML head insertion point, and this is the code fragment that will be inserted into navigation, and this is the uh, code fragment that will be inserted into main navigation uh, main insertion point. Okay, so uh, our template, by the way, can be inherited. So uh, if you happen to have a parent template that access HTML file you can create a child template.xml file by specifying template like this. Okay, so template can be inherited. So you can actually share a common template okay, uh, among child templates. Okay, so let's do our first exercise. So exercise one is templating. So let me actually run the application first. So we are going to run this application. 
Uh, all the sample applications are provided as a Maven project, so you can use either uh, NetBeans or Eclipse or STS or My Intelligent uh, the, uh, J, uh, whatever ID of your choice. Okay, so here I'm actually using uh, Eclipse, so I'm going to run it. So this is what gets displayed. So uh, this is the uh, 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 header, and this is the footer, and this is the menu, and this is the content. So for now, the content of this home menu uh, is selected. Now, if I select products, it will display product content. If I select contact S, it will uh, select contact S page. Okay, so very simple, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, pages. So let's take a look at the code. I'm going to actually use I'm going to use uh, the lab documentation so that we can actually see some highlighted code. Okay, so let's take a look at the template file first. Okay, so template file is this. So here, uh, oh, by the way, so template file is let's just to show you where the template file is located. So uh, template file is located under um, the um, Web by an app. Yeah, so this is a template file. Uh, so web INF and includes. Okay, and then we have a footers and headers. Okay, all right. So now it defines the three insertion point as we have seen uh, HTML head and navigation and main. Okay. Now let's take a look at the header HTML file. So that is included here, right? Okay. And uh, so this header XHTML file and footer XHTML file has been included, meaning the contents of this will be included. Okay. So header contains a UI composition, and uh, you know basically this is going to be just included, okay, into the uh, header portion. And uh, in this case, uh, the uh, footer portion, uh, this is going to be inserted into uh, the uh, right here, okay. So if you take, a, and then we have a CSS file, and again, this is a common CSS file for all display page, okay? All right, so uh, that is what we're actually seeing here, okay? Now, let's see the display page. So, you know, for now, we are seeing home display page. So if you take a look at the home display page, so this is the uh, home display page. So let's take a look at the home display page from the IDE. And again, you specify the template location, okay? And uh, then it defined uh, the uh, the uh, fragment. So this fragment will be inserted into the template insertion point of HTML head, okay? And here, this is going to be uh, inserted into navigation, okay? All right. So it basically contains the output text home, and then it has a link, right? And then we have a main. It's basically displaying home page. Okay, so that's what you're actually seeing. Uh, right here. Okay, so this is actually coming from the display page and this contents is actually provided from display page to the template. Okay. So that is uh, home dot the uh, home dot XHTML file and uh, other files, for example, uh, the products XHTML file is pretty much the same thing, except the contents is going to be different. So in this case, uh, you know, the actually the link will be different, right? So in this case, the link will be home and contact us, and the output text is going to be product, and uh, the contents of main insertion point it will display product page. Okay. All right. So let's get back to uh, so here. Um, oh, by the way, as I said before, you know, JSF will ignore anything outside of the UI composition. Okay, so if you take a look at the home.xhtml file, for example, okay, so the uh, in this case, uh, the uh, um, uh, um, yeah, so this is actually should be ignored, meaning uh, you know, the um, anything outside of this one will be actually ignored. Okay, so let me see. 
yeah, so you know you can see the title is not actually you know when you display the display page, uh, the uh, ignore is not going to be actually displayed. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Uh, by the way, if you are using uh, Internet Explorer, especially old version of Internet Explorer, uh, this uh, page might not get displayed correctly. So in that case, use a later version of IE and use Firefox. Okay. Yeah, so this syntax might not be actually 100% compatible with the old version of IE. I didn't get a chance to actually correct it. So in case you are experiencing with a problem with the old uh, version of IE, just use the Chrome. Okay. All right, so uh, 1.4 is your own exercise. So here you are going to add footer.xhtml file. Okay, so let's actually try that. So I'm going to actually add another footer. So I'm going to just copy and then paste. So I'm going to say footer2. Okay, and the footer2 here, I'm going to just display a copyright 2012 or something like that. And what 12,000, whatever. Okay. And uh, then we are going to add uh, the uh, this footer into uh, the template. Okay. So, so we're going to add to this template file. And every display page will actually share uh, the uh, this uh, footer to that XTML file. Okay. All right. And uh, so, you know, yeah, yeah, I can just copy the images and things like that. Okay, so let's run this application again. Actually, I should be able to just refresh the page. Yeah, you can see the uh, this second uh, footer is shared by all pages. Okay. Okay, because we added we added a new uh, footer into template page. Okay, so it's relatively straightforward exercise. Uh, here we are adding another display page. So here we are adding discount uh, display page, and uh, again it's actually using the same template. Okay, so it should actually share the same look and feel. Okay, so you know basically yeah yeah so you know we basically now contains another menu like a display page. Okay. All right. So that is templating. So let's move on to uh, the uh, um, the slide for um, composite components. So in JSF 1.x, uh, the building composite components was very complex and uh, cumbersome. So that's the reason, in fact, JSF 1.x uh, it wasn't really as popular uh, as uh, the uh, the uh, uh, as a web application framework. So JSF 2.0 really corrected that problem. So in JSF 2.0, it's so simple to create a composite component. Uh, in JSF 1.x, you, know, you have to actually build, in fact, custom tags to be able to actually create a composite, composite component. And in JSF 2.0, uh, it's very simple. Okay? So basically, you can just kind of create XHTML file, and uh, that becomes a uh, composite component, uh, which is, in fact, the uh, inside of JSF framework is going to be represented by a UI component object. So basically, you can contain the CSS file, PNG file, or JavaScript file, and then uh, mark out XHTML file, and then you build this UI component. And we're going to actually see that example in a second. So the reason you want to actually create these things, uh, you know, the reason you want to actually create the uh, UI composite component is that basically UI component will abstract out uh, reusable UI components. I mean, the same reason that you might want, in fact, use the uh, widget in Swing applications, okay? Uh, because the uh, the UI component captures a lot of functions that you uh, you want to use, and all you have to do is basically, you know, use that uh, Swing component in your application. Then all the behavior is actually provided to you, okay? Uh, so it provides a true and reusable component from arbitrary vision of a page. And, uh, you know, you can build the uh, component, composite component from other composite components. And uh, it does actually have a full support for uh, the associating action method and attaching uh, action listeners and validators and converters. So 